Hello and welcome to another Blender Bite Size video. In this one I'm going to show you how to create a rubber latex material procedurally in Blender 4. So here's the kit that I'm using. It's Blender 4.2, Windows 11, Nvidia graphics card, Cycles render engine and a custom startup file that I show you how to create in a separate video. Just before I continue with the tutorial, let me remind you that you can grab this material and hundreds more on my Gumroad store, blenderbitesize.gumroad.com. Okay, so here we are in the custom startup file where I've got my scene already set up. I've got the Suzanne monkey head, a light, a camera, and a room with some additional lighting in the walls. I'm switching over to the shading tab and enabling display render preview selecting the object and assigning a new material. So the first thing I'm going to do is drag out a connector from the base color and search for and apply a noise texture. Then I'm going to press Ctrl T while that's selected to apply a texture coordinate and a mapping node. And then I'll connect up the object output from the texture coordinate. On the noise texture, I'm adjusting the scale to 2, the detail to 15. And then I'm going to press Shift A and search for and apply a color ramp in between the noise texture and the principal shader. I'll then press Shift D while that's selected to duplicate that color ramp and connect it up to the same noise texture output. The next node to go in is a mix color node and that's going to go between the color ramps and the principal shader. Actually no, I need a, oh hang on, a math node, that's what it was, not a mix shader. Come on, get yourself together. Anyway, once we've got that, we connect up the two color ramps and then we need an RGB node. That will give us our color. Connect that up to the base color. And the math node to the roughness of the principal shader. Then we expand the coat section of the principal shader and connect up that math node to the weight of that coat. Then we're going to search for a bump node. Connect up that math node to the height input of the bump node and then the bump node to the normal input of the principal shader. Adjust the strength to 0 0.025 and the distance to 0.5. Expand the specular section of the principled shader and then connect up the RGB to the tint of that and also of the coat. And then I just press shift and right click and drag across that to create a single connector. You can select those connectors and press G to move them around if you need to. Okay, so on the top color ramp, we're changing the interpolation to B spline. That gives us a softer graduation. Dragging the black across to 0.25 position. And then on the second color input, we're gonna drag that down till we've got a dark grayish color. Then on the RGB node, we're going to set the value to 0 0.05. That'll give us a nice blackish color. On the second color ramp, change the interpolation to ease. Drag that black value across to 0.5. And the white to 0.75.
I'm then copying and pasting the color from the top color ramp to the bottom. So we've got this, the same gray in use there. Changing the index of refraction in the principal shader to 1.45. And I think we're almost done. So if we zoom in, you can see that it's shiny, but when you get up close, it's got this texture to it, which you would see on a rubber latex material. I'm just dropping that color value down to 0 0.025 instead to make it a little bit more black. You can, of course, assign any color you want to this. So you could have a red rubber latex, whatever you fancy, really. Anyway, these are my render settings. So I'm using the Cycles Render Engine. I've got Noise Threshold to 0 0.025. Uh, I've got Light Paths set as follows, with Core Sticks enabled for the Reflective, not the Refractive. I've got Fast GI Approximation enabled with those settings. Some Camera Culling going on to save some memory. The compositor I've got set to use my GPU so it doesn't clog up the CPU. And speaking of the compositing, I've got a despeckle node here set with those settings and a little bit of lens distortion. So let's see what that looks like. And there we go. I did speed that up, but it took around 13 seconds in all. And of course, as you can see here, we have that rubber latex material in action. I hope you enjoy this and will have fun using it in your projects. Of course, please do give the video a thumbs up if you have, subscribe for future content, and of course, leave any comments in the usual places. In the meantime, thanks for watching.